Two American aid workers infected with Ebola received ZMAP, an experimental treatment serum made by MAP Biopharmaceutical in Sorrento Valley. How do you get Ebola? How does it spread? What's the risk here in San Diego? And what does the latest research tell us about finding a cure? Here with those answers and more is my guest, Erica Ullman Sapphire, co-director of the Global Virus Network Center of Excellence at Scripps Research Institute. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, Erica, what is Ebola briefly and how do you get infected? Well, Ebola is a very bad virus and you get infected by contact with infected body fluids, so blood or, or vomit or diarrhea, usually taking care of an infected patient. And um, it's not transmitted, I understand, through sneezing or coughing. How is it transmitted? And uh, describe the symptoms for us and how it's diagnosed. Well, it's transmitted by body fluids. So if you're taking care of a patient and you're exposed to their vomit or their blood or those kinds of things, or if the needle was used in them and then in you, that would get you infected. Now, the symptoms begin with fever and headache, but progress to hemorrhage and shock and uh, organ failure and necrosis of the tissues in the cells. And how do you diagnose that? It can be diagnosed a number of different ways. You can use PCR to look for viral nucleic acids in the cells. That's very rapid. You can also detect patient antibodies. Uh, that's the patient's response to the virus. That comes later. And you can look for particles of the virus themselves. Through blood tests? Then. Yes. I see. Um, compared to global death rates for other viral infections, and we're talking around the world here, the actual number of deaths from Ebola is relatively low, uh, with 932 Ebola deaths so far this year, compared to about 122,000 annual flu deaths and about 1.6 million AIDS-related deaths each year. But 90% of those infected with Ebola do die. Do we know why there's such a high mortality rate with this particular virus? There are a number of reasons for that. The virus is very tricky. So first, it replicates rapidly. At time of death, a patient could have a billion copies of the virus in a cubic centimeter of their sera. So that's a lot of virus. Second, the virus uh, expresses molecules that actively suppress your immune system. So they prevent you from mounting the immune response you would need to fight it. And third, the virus rearranges and changes itself as it goes into the cell. So it's a moving target. I know you direct the global consortium uh, that's working on finding an Ebola treatment as well as treatments for other viruses. What can you tell us about the ZMAP, the experimental uh, serum that's been given to some victims under a compassionate use? Uh, uh, really the reason it's right. compassionate. It hasn't been tested in humans before. Of course not. No, it's still a mm -hmm. research product. So this is three purified antibodies put together. So an antibody is a molecule your immune system would make to fight an infection. It's what you get after a vaccine. Your own body would make it. Here we're delivering the antibodies immediately. And so the way they work, so this is a model of the surface protein of the Ebola virus. This is the kind of work my lab does. You see blue and white. Blue is what would attach to the new human cell to drive it in. Now the white wrapped around the blue like a thread around a spool is a piece of protein machinery that's spring loaded like a spear fishing rod. And in infection, it'll uncoil and drive the virus into the human cell. Now this is the same molecule with an antibody bound to it. So what the antibody has done is it's anchored itself here, locking the pieces of the machinery together. It's neutralized the virus by preventing it from infecting other cells. Other antibodies in the ZMAP cocktail alert the immune system to the presence of that infection so your immune system can clear the virus and clear infected cells. It's still experimental, though. So Absolutely. what do we know about how effective it's been so far? Well, it's early days. This is a research product. So Matt Bio and the Public Health Agency of Canada and USAMRID had seen that in test tubes, it could neutralize the virus. They saw that it could protect mice. They saw that it could protect non-human primates. And the earlier, the better. 24 hours or even three days after exposure to the virus, the antibodies could save all of the primates. Later, it gets more difficult to save them. So there's definitely a treatment window. Well, I understand there's five species of the Ebola virus. How does that impact uh, research and, and development of uh, new drugs or treatments for it? Well, that's the challenge. There are these five species, and they're co-circulating. They're all different. You have to have antibodies that against each one of them. And that's one of the reasons we have this global consortium, where 25 laboratories across seven countries are all putting their resources into one single study to develop treatments like ZMAP for all the other viruses like it that circulate in Africa and in Asia. Well, I know the U.S. military and federal government are involved in Ebola research. Why, um, how, let me ask you this, how is the government's involvement actually impacting, let's say, your Ebola research or research around the world on this? We couldn't do it without them. All of this is paid for by federal funding. So the NIAID pays all of the salaries and all the consumables and all the animals. It's, it's critical. 
uh, we, we can't do anything without those federal research dollars. Okay, and uh, I guess you'll keep us posted on what's going on from here. There's a I lot will. more on our website, kpbs.org. Erica Ullman-Sapphire, thanks so much. Thank you for having me.